If you recall from some of our earlier fixer flop videos, we've run into a few cases where AIOs have caused CPUs to run exceptionally hot. We're talking 60 plus degrees Celsius at idle, 100 plus degrees Celsius under any sustained load at all, T-junction, it's just not good for the CPUs. And what I've also noticed throughout this process is that a lot of these AIOs don't have ASATEC pumps, which means they aren't in the CPU blocks, they're actually in the radiators, and that's a way for a lot of these companies to bypass that Asatec patent, which is very, very wide reaching. And I don't think it's a coincidence that MSI happened to recall the very same AIO model that we disassembled in a Fix or Flop episode because it was clogged and causing the viewer's chip to run super hot. I don't expect them to give us credit for it, but I do think that that caused a lot of folks to then reach out to the company because their AIO, which is a very similar name, right, or maybe the exact same model, was creating similar symptoms for them. Nobody wants a system that runs super hot for really stupid reasons. You can see from this footage in that video that this debris built up, especially in the CPU block, is what is disrupting flow, and that is what's causing these CPUs to overheat. So if it just comes down to a lack of biocide then, this would point to a manufacturing defect, whoever is producing these AIOs, or more specifically the liquid for these AIOs, is responsible. And MSI, of course, is going to end up outsourcing a lot of this to just companies that do this on, on a massive scale. Um, and that's why a lot of AIOs look the same from multiple brands. They're all using the same manufacturers from the same countries. So in this video, I decided to reach out to viewers who had similar AIOs. We have a box here from a viewer, and this has a Core Liquid 240R in it, so a 240ml AIO. This is the exact unit that MSI recalled. We also have this box here, and uh, don't worry, this isn't like a, a chewy product. There, there's an AIO in here. It's actually the exact same unit as what's in here, which again is the one recalled. So we're going to run tests with uh, this one specifically because it comes with the mounting gear. Actually, I got the entire product box with all the stuff inside. So kudos to this viewer for sending this whole, uh, whole kit out. But uh, we're going to see what the temperatures look like under load because apparently the system that he had with this unit uh, was overheating very quickly, just like what we saw in our playlist. Same goes for uh, this second unit here. So we're going to have some fun. We're going to run some tests. And at the very end, we're going to take these apart and see just how bad the clogging is. Are you ready? Stay with me. NZXT has rolled out their new function mechanical keyboards in varying sizes and with plenty of customizability via their BLD service. Choose between five different gator on switches, three chassis colorways, two color keycaps, and multiple accent caps and cables for a truly unique custom mechanical experience. Enjoy RGB lighting, key remapping, and multiple sizes as well, from full size to mini TKL, like this one here. It's my favorite. It packs a lot of punch in such a tiny package with media keys, volume roller, and durable aluminum top plate to round out the industrial industrial field. To start customizing your NCXT function mechanical keyboard, be sure to click the link below. So let's see what's inside this first box, shall we? Oh, look at there. It is, like I said, the full product box. So if you have an AIO that looks something like this here and you're experiencing toasty temperatures, toastier than normal, again, 30 degrees or 40 degrees Celsius at idle, especially after your loop has, has thermally equalized, is perfectly normal, okay? That is not a reason to complain. However, if you do have one of these, it's an early sample, maybe you bought it, I don't know, six months ago or whenever these came out, and you're concerned about the possibility of this problem arising in the future, I wouldn't blame you for being proactive. I don't think MSI would either. I would personally still try to uh, take advantage of the recall, just so you don't have to worry about it in the future. We have the 240 mil AIO. Go ahead and show you guys this here. And this of course is used, so you're gonna see some dust. Uh, it's not a clean product. I wouldn't expect it to be anyway. It's uh, pretty much dead as it is. Uh, again, I said this in an earlier video as well. If you want, you can attempt to refill the AIO in question yourself. It is possible to do, as long as that fluid is treated. Uh, if you're gonna use distilled water, I recommend adding maybe like a, a, a few drops of biocide, maybe a, a little strand of silver will do as well. Um, and then of course, treat it for galvanic corrosion, add some inhibitors there. You should be fine. I don't expect many people to have just extra AIL fluid laying around, but some brands do include extra in the box. I know Be Quiet does, and that's really nice. Um, but most folks are just gonna end up tossing them out, or in this case, completely recalling the unit in question. And this here is our mounting gear, awesome. So this will allow us to mount to AM4. I have a system already up and running that we're going to uh, turn on and, and we're just gonna reveal that the temperatures are fine with the stock 
AMD cooler that's there. Uh, and then we're gonna swap over to this AIO and we're gonna see how bad the temperatures get. So this is the setup we're gonna be working with. I have a 5600G in here, which is why we don't have a discrete graphics card. The system post, no problem. We're in the BIOS and you can see CPU temperatures are in the mid thirties, which is perfectly normal, very acceptable, especially for a low profile, quiet stock cooler from AMD. There's really no point in even running. I, I was thinking about running some burn-in tests just to show you what, what peak temperatures will be like, uh, but there's just, there's no real comparison here. When you have an AIO that's clogged, you're not gonna be able to do anything, let alone run a serious burn-in test for the CPU. Uh, and again, our idle temps are gonna be a dead giveaway. So the fact that we're at 35, to see, uh, 35 degrees Celsius here, I know that this chip is fine. It's obviously perfectly suited for a stock Wraith Stealth cooler from AMD. It's a 5600G for crying out loud, it's a 65 watt TDP chip. Uh, all I'm going to do at this point is swap in the AIO. I'm gonna connect the fan so that the you know radiator can function properly. I'll also connect the pump, of course, and that's about it. I don't think I'm gonna install it in the case. We'll just leave it sitting out. Again, all we're looking for is that drastic change in idle temps, which according to the viewer, we should experience right away. So let's get this stock cooler out of here. Just four screws, disconnect the fan cable, of course, and we'll give it a little twist before we pull away. We're gonna give this AIO every chance we can to keep temps in check. So I'm gonna start off with fresh thermal compound then we'll get the block mounted. Nice little X pattern there should do. All right, and with the block torqued down, I've got all of the cables connected. So the uh, pump here, which runs from the radiator and the two fans, no RGB, it's not necessary for this test. We're gonna fire up the system again and hop into the BIOS. Of course, there's also the slight possibility that the viewer uh, just got it wrong. Maybe didn't install the AIO correctly. Yeah, that clicking sound, we've heard that before. <laughs> I think this is exactly the same case. So right away, CPU temperatures are at 43 degrees Celsius, which in and of itself isn't super alarming. However, the coolant should be at room temperature because it hasn't been running what several days at this point. So we're gonna leave this on for a few more minutes and see if these temperatures rise. By that time, we should reach some sort of thermal equilibrium. We'll know if this AIO is in fact bad. A few moments later. Holy crap, Ola. Okay, 86 degrees Celsius. It's been like 10 minutes and this thing is already super, super toasty. Um, yeah, this is exactly what we saw in the previous fix or flop video, this is a perfect candidate. I guarantee you this AIO is clogged. Yikes, and now we're at 95 degrees Celsius. Okay, um, I'm killing power. I don't want my CPU to die just running these tests. Now it's time for AIO number two. This one apparently has the exact same problem, the exact same uh, high temperatures at idle in the BIOS, etc. cetera. And uh, I'll take both of these apart, by the way, if it's confirmed that both do have the high temp issue. I just don't wanna spend the time taking this apart, ruining it. Uh, if we, yeah, if we don't need to. So that's why I wanna test both ahead of time. The first one checks out, of course, we're gonna take that one apart, but this one, not so sure about. So the second one is now installed. Uh, it's actually facing a slightly different way. I, I just, yeah, anyway, it's not gonna matter. We just wanna make sure that it doesn't overheat. I expect though that it will. Uh, we've got everything connected. Let's go ahead and power the system on. So power at the rear, power button up front. Make sure the fans are spinning. The AIO is working, the pump is on. And uh, we'll hop straight into the BIOS again. We'll just let it sit here for about 10 minutes, let the fluid equalize or attempt to. Uh, it usually doesn't in this case, just because it can't, because it's not circulating properly. And it looks like we're in the mid 40s again for idle CPU temps, pretty much a splitting image of the first Core Liquid 240R. So I'm gonna let things sit for about 10 minutes. If history has anything to say about what's about to happen, we'll be in the, I don't know, lower 80s, maybe even lower 90s at the end of this. So. Make sure my CPU doesn't die. 12 seconds later. And well, uh, again, 66 degrees, idle temp. That is definitely abnormal. The fans have all ramped up to try to compensate for this higher speed. But again, unless you're getting proper fluid flow, those fans pushing air through the radiator aren't really gonna be as effective. You can see down here at the bottom, our pump is in fact spinning at around the same RPM, about 26 to 2700 rotations per minute and uh, yeah, still terrible idle temperatures. We're gonna start here with this first AIO and we'll move to the pump side to begin with just because, uh, well, this isn't usually where most of the clogging takes place, at least from what we can see in the chamber. Yeah, you know, actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna put some gloves on. Like I said, this fluid has a very, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty bad smell. Um, I just prefer this not to soak into my skin. So I expect there'll be a bit of, uh, bit of this fluid pouring out once we remove the pump. Um, you know, it's not actually, it's not the color I was expecting it to be. Let's remove the pump altogether. And uh, I guess we can shift our attention to the block side. 
That's that's super strange. I'm just I'm letting it pour out here and it doesn't even smell. It actually smells like a normal glycol solution. That's super weird. Um, maybe there's maybe there's still sludge on on the block side. I don't know. We'll we'll, we'll find out. Last one here. And all right, moment of truth. I want to be very confused if we don't see clogging here. Uh, okay, we do have we do have a bit of it. I'm 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 actually shocked. It's it's pretty clean here in the block. We've seen pretty nasty debris in our coolers, but I can definitely see why our temperatures were rising because there is quite a bit of buildup here uh, over the fin stack for the cold plate and that is totally disrupting flow, no doubt. Basically the area there in the middle is where fluid will first contact the cold plate and then it'll move around to the sides uh, through tiny little channels and that's how heat is absorbed from the CPU side of things. But of course when you block this central channel you prevent fluid from moving effectively through those tiny little fins and that's how you get the increase in temperatures that we were seeing in the BIOS. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this little rubber cover here Oh yeah, yep, and that's that's a lot of gunk. Uh, it's not as bad as what we saw in our playlist, but this is still significant enough, again, to obviously affect temperatures to the degree that they did. Uh, this cooler was running in the high 80s, low 90s at idle after about 10 minutes. And this is all it takes, folks. Just this little bit of debris right here, which gets trapped right before the fluid enters these fin stacks. Now let's look at AIO number two. And seeing as the temperatures were lower, still high, but lower with this one, it's probably not gonna be as clogged as the first. That's just my guess based on what we saw earlier. So it looks like we still have, yep, fairly clean fluid. Actually, I see a bit of, yeah, I see a bit of gunk already here in the pump chamber. How are we looking in here? Moving the copper cold plate. Um, yeah, actually not as bad. So there we go. There's, oh, actually the debris in this is a bit orange. Yeah, this is, this is pretty, this is a pretty, pretty strong color. Um, it's not as orange again as what we saw before, but the chunks in here are a pretty deep orange. And I think that's what leads to eventually just the coolant overall to just kind of equalize uh, being a lot darker shade uh, than just the kind of neutral white that it usually is, or the neutral clear. Uh, this is not as much debris. I'll show these two side by side here in a B-roll clip. Uh, you can see that the, uh, the first one, the one on the left, is definitely a bit more clogged, and that's why we saw temperatures spike uh, much quicker in the BIOS at idle. Checking the block sides of these AIOs though, and you can see that there's really not a lot of debris at all caked in anywhere. Um, there was quite a bit in our video. A lot of stuff had fallen out and gotten uh, just lodged in here. Uh, and in fact, in a different AIO from a different manufacturer, which I suspect was using similar fluid from a similar manufacturer, just wasn't treated properly. We had tons of built up larger chunks of debris in the block uh, and the pump was also in the radiator. So there's, there's a pretty serious QC problem, or at least there was uh, happening earlier here this year. And I'm hoping that these issues have been hashed out since these videos have gone public. Well, uh, that was fun. My allergies are now really acting up because of whatever was in the, especially that second AIO. I'm not sure uh, what it is. Again, it's it's obviously something that Biocide can probably treat. Uh, I'm not sure if it's allergy growth or what, but the coolant in the second one was definitely turning a bit orange. And that was kind of the precursor to what we saw in our fixer flop video. That coolant was definitely a dark orange and it smelled awful and it totally clogged that viewer's loop. So let this be a little PSA to those who have Core Liquid 240Rs. I think this also applies to 360Rs, which is a 360 mil variant of this AIO. Uh, if you have one of these early models and you're concerned about CPU temperatures, even if you're not seeing high temps right now, I personally would still try to be proactive and send this back to MSI. They'll send you a replacement. Apparently the new uh, version of this has updated fluid that should not clog. That tells me that it's definitely a fluid problem, uh, which comes from the manufacturer, whoever is manufacturing the fluid that goes in here. It might be the same manufacturer that designs the pumps for these. I have no idea. It's obviously not Asetech because, well, Asetech patent 
designs look different. They're just usually they're in the block and the way that they sidestep the patents in these products, they usually have to put the pump somewhere else uh, in order to sell in US markets. So that's why I know this isn't an Asotech pump. But anyway, uh, if you want to uh, sign up for the RMA process, I'll have that info. I'll try to find it in the video description. So check it out there. If you, I, I mean, let, let's see. This is the use case where I think it's gonna really hinder folks. If, I mean, what MSI is doing is fine, right? The fact that they're owning up to the mistake, it's its probably not their warehouse. It's, again, it's gonna be a, a third party supplier of these products that, that's ultimately gone bad. Uh, but they're still taking accountability for it and they're offering the RMA. The issue is folks that buy, let's say, pre-builts that have these coolers in them, they buy pre-builts presumably because either they don't have time to build themselves or they're just not very familiar with PC hardware. Um, you're, you're asking those folks to take these out, right? Completely disassemble them safely and ship them and then install new ones once you ship the new ones back. And in that interim period, you're gonna have downtime, of course, unless you have a replacement stock cooler or something to use. Uh, and, and that's just, it, it's not ideal. Again, it's better than nothing. I, but it's just not ideal. So it, it's definitely gonna be a hindrance to some folks, I understand that. Uh, and it's just unfortunate that we've gotten here. I hope that in the future, MSI will be a bit more careful about the fluids that they are using in these loops. Uh, they clearly were not QC'd well enough. And the fact that so many individuals are having issues with these AIOs tells me that it's a pretty widespread issue. It's not as isolated as MSI might be making it seem. Uh, so that's why I want folks who have these AIOs to, to again, be proactive uh, and, and hopefully MSI will follow through quickly for you so that your system doesn't have any downtime and so that your system doesn't overheat in the long run. With that, if you guys enjoyed this video, let me know by giving this one a thumbs up. That would be greatly appreciated. Consider subscribing if you have not already. And let me know in the comment section below what issues you've run into with your AIO. If it's an MSI AIO, let me know. Uh, if it's some other brand, um, that info would also be very helpful. We've run into different units that look like they're using similar coolant from possibly the same distributor, same manufacturer in China or wherever. Uh, and so this this could affect more than just a single brand. It gives MSI is the first one to speak up, and I applaud them for that. But there are other brands that are certainly being affected by this. I don't think it's just MSI, just based on what we've already seen here in the office. So uh, maybe for the next round of, of um, tests that we do with products like these, if you have a different AIO brand, I mean, it could still be an MSI AIO, but not a Core Liquid 240R. Obviously, we know these are recalled already, right? So um, that's that's pretty much public knowledge at this point, or especially after this video goes live. But if you have maybe, I, I don't know, could be another brand's AIO. I think we had a Rock Hat AIO, or, or it was some other brand. I can't remember. Um, had a very similar clogging issue, right? Those are the ones I wanna check out now because as far as I'm aware, at least at the time of filming, those companies haven't made announcements yet about QC issues with their coolant. And it seems to me that many of them are using this style coolant, which needs to be addressed. So uh, that's what I would look for next. If you have an AIO like that and you want us to test it, take it apart, maybe we can create some sort of PSA here in these videos for companies to be aware of going forward so that these issues don't happen and so that folks aren't scared of using AIOs. These are great products. I know folks are, oh, that's why I use air cooling because I don't have to deal with this crap. I get it. That's a perfectly valid point. But there are certainly use cases for AIOs. They, they also look really cool as well. And I don't want folks to be, you know, shied away from buying these just because they see a few here and there that have coolant issues. Um, a majority of brands have this under control. Again, it just so happens to be that most Asatec AIOs have this under control. They've been doing it a long time. They have the sole patent for a lot of AIO products out there, or at least the pumps that go in them. Uh, but every now and then you come across uh, a product like this that has an issue and folks tend to extrapolate that and say, oh, all AIOs suck, that's why I don't buy them. Uh, that's certainly not the case, but it is important that we educate ourselves uh, and uh, that we bring awareness to the fact that there are some products out there that need to, uh, that need to be, yeah in the spotlight for negative reasons. And hopefully going forward, these core liquid products won't have this issue. According to MSI, they don't. I'm out of here. Thank you guys for watching so far into this one. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.